Well, as you can see by the attire, we've changed location and the weather has changed dramatically. But uh, we made it to uh, Portland, which is only about half an hour down the road from um, Haywood, where we were. And of course, the first site that we come to is quite spectacular. I mentioned that uh, there was a lot of pulp wood and uh, forestry around about the place. Well, this looks like the uh, either the export for international or national markets, and uh, it's a staggering uh, way of un unloading the uh, the trucks. He's just now been tipped out, and it's coming back. <laughs> Amazing strength of machinery, isn't it? Just noticed down here a, a fishing boat. It's obviously a squid boat. It's one I haven't seen up close like this. Pretty neat with the big old Chinese lanterns up there. That'd probably be worth a few dollars. And then of course you got your fishing bays down the bottom here with the, I guess the lines attached to them. Yeah. Oh yeah, and there's another, <laughs> another truck up in the air. Yeah, pretty interesting little port. Right, here's a very interesting phenomenon. Uh, read into it what you may. It's called the Petrified Forest. And honestly, I was, I was just walking through this little landscape, not really sort of noticing it. It was quite shady to start with, but when you do look, you can see these craters around. You just think of them as craters. Until you get to this little wall structure here. Now the, the lighting's bad at the moment. Sun's in my way there, but yeah, you get what looks like tree trunks. So the scientific study goes is that there was uh, sand along here and where, it's, where water would pull in the sand, it would gradually seep down. And uh, the water would dissolve the limestone that's in the sand and it would then become uh, like a cement again when it when it would sort of dribble down it would then harden as a cement as the water continues its way down and some of these apparently can be anywhere from three to 20 meters in length so yeah a really interesting phenomenon i don't know how long they go for but yeah hopefully that shows in the old camera lens if not jude might have some photos of it it's uh, pretty neat. We're down at the viewing platform at uh, Cape Bridgewater. This viewing platform is meant to give us a good view of a blowhole. But like our luck, it's either, well that was pretty good, it's either uh, too high or, or too low. Oh, I, <laughs> I hope the camera is pointing. Was that it over there, was it? Oh, hell's bells. Oh well. 
Hopefully my head wasn't in the way when it went off. But uh, I've been, been sitting here for about uh, five minutes and kind of like, well, I'm not seeing anything. Looks like our rotten luck. But there's a, uh, I think a cray fisherman out over here. He's hopefully getting better luck at catching crays than we have of seeing blowholes. But I think it's down over in this area here. Well, that's a good wave bounce there. It's over there somewhere. Yeah, definitely getting a good spray going up. So I uh, couldn't resist uh, stopping on the side of the, the road here and uh, getting this vid of these monsters. So this is the uh, Cape Bridgewater wind farm and uh, they're huge. So I think the, uh, the diameter of the blades is around about 80 meters. I think the, uh, the overall height of the whole thing is, uh, I think it was over 90, 100 meters. Uh, 40 odd ton for the uh, just the blade and the hub assembly and uh, I think it was over 70 ton for the entire structure. It's interesting to point out too that uh, it's since closed down but uh, I think in Portland here there was a uh, thriving uh, business manufacturing these blades. Not these ones in particular because these, these are a lot bigger than the ones they were originally manufacturing but uh, yeah they were pumping out some 225 blades a year for the turbines but uh, certainly uh, a pretty staggering little wind farm around here. Just popped around here in town now we're uh, just past the lighthouse. This is a water tower that's been converted into a memorial for World War, uh, World War II 1945. 1995. Should point out that the uh, tram, there's a neat little tram that runs around town to spots like these and you can um, come and grab a, a seat I believe and just tootle around and visit all these little spots. I've managed to uh, trust my hat I think but I'm not keen to go out on the points yet but there's a nice little whale watching spot in there and uh, hopefully Jude's made her way into the memorial here. So, what a museum of a difference. Come into this one here, it's a water tower, and they've utilized the water tower to commemorate the wars gone by. At each level that you come to is depicting a different war. That's a pretty staggering use of a water tower. The water tower was apparently uh, obsolete for the uh, 1990s, and they were gonna demolish it 
and uh, it's really nice to know that they've been able to save the water tower and put something like this in its place where it could be treasured and keep on heading up. There's got to be one, there's got to be four or five stories. But the, some of the murals on the wall here are really cool. Sorry, that the, it might be a little hard to see out the windows. Up over this way is where we're going to be heading. Port Ferry's over there, we're going to be going across the top of Port Ferry. And of course Melbourne's about 312 kilometres as the crow flies, out in that direction there. Over this way here we've got the, uh, the port of um, Portland. Very popular port with, uh, I understand it's one of the deeper of the ports between um, Adelaide and Melbourne. So, very uh, well used. I think behind that is the aluminium smelter, uh, a coa, I think they call it. And of course we've got the wind farms all out here. We're out that way there where uh, Cape um, Bridgewater was, where the blowholes and the petrified forest was. Yeah, was, and of course the town's just down in front of us. They say when you come up to the, uh, the tower, make sure you look out and down. Now sadly, we don't get a good shot of it with our camera, so you'd have to be here in real life. But down the bottom there is at the rising of the sun, which is a the commemorative thing for our soldiers. So uh, yeah, there we have it. In a nutshell, we come from over this way here. That was, um, oh, you can't see it. The windows are all icky-bicky. Actually, it might, might be more out that way is where we came from the last couple of days. Great little spot. It's worth the, uh, the price of admission to get up here, get the view, see some of the memorials as you come on up. Come on up. Thanks for watching Sweet As RV. Remember to tick that like and subscribe and share it to your friends. Thank you. Whalers Bluff Lighthouse. Prior to 1854, there were no lighthouses on the Victorian coast. The lighthouse, which currently stands at Whalers Bluff, was initially built with lightkeepers quarters on Battery Point. It first was used in May 1859 and then permanently lit 1st of September 1859. The keeper's cottage was occupied by Portland's first lightkeeper, Mr. John Eastman, who remained as lightkeeper until his death in 1881. In 1889, the battery emplacement was commenced and in 1890, the lighthouse and associated buildings were moved stone by stone to the North Bluff, known as Whaler's Bluff.